the U.S. Air Force has quietly begun developing the Next Generation Penetrator, or NGP, a direct successor to the GBU-57 Massive Ordnance Penetrator, the largest and most powerful non-nuclear bomb ever built. After proving its devastating capability in Operation Midnight Hammer, where B-2 stealth bombers unleashed the mop against Iran's fortified nuclear sites, the Pentagon isn't just resting on past success. It wants something smarter, faster, more accurate, and even deadlier. But why now? And what does this mean for future high-end conflicts against countries like China or North Korea? The GBU-57 MOP has always been an engineering marvel, a 30,000-pound bunker buster designed to smash through reinforced concrete and deeply buried facilities. But as adversaries have upgraded their defenses, the Air Force knows it needs a weapon that goes beyond just raw mass. That's where the next-generation penetrator comes in. Just weeks ago, Applied Research Associates announced it has secured a contract from the Air Force Life Cycle Management Center at Eglin Base Air Force Base to design, prototype, and test this new weapon system. Partnering closely with Boeing, the NGP program represents a critical modernization step for U.S. strike capabilities. Over the next 24 months, ARA will develop subscale and full-scale prototypes designed to hit hard and deeply buried targets, sites to pose direct threats to U.S. national security. Now here's the interesting part. Unlike the MOP, which is massive but relatively limited in terms of guidance tech, the NGP aims to combine brute force with extreme precision. According to contracting documents, the Air Force is demanding terminal accuracy within 2.2 meters. Yes, less than 7 feet from the intended impact point, even in GPS-denied environments. That's an incredibly steep requirement. To put this into perspective, current JDAMs average a 5-meter accuracy radius with full GPS, but lose precision dramatically without it. The NGP, on the other hand, is being engineered to maintain near-pinpoint accuracy even under jamming, spoofing, or degraded navigation conditions. This tells us one thing. The Air Force expects to use this weapon against adversaries with advanced electronic warfare systems. Think China's Pacific fortifications or North Korea's heavily defended missile bunkers. Designing a replacement for the GBU-57 Massive Ordnance Penetrator is not as simple as building a bigger bomb. In fact, that's the last thing the U.S. Air Force wants. The GBU-57 proved its devastating capability during Operation Midnight Hammer, but its size, over 30,000 pounds, makes it extremely challenging to deploy effectively. Only the B-2 stealth bomber can currently carry them up, and even then, it's limited to just two bombs per sortie. When the B-21 Raider comes online, it's expected to carry only one permission, given its smaller payload bay. This limitation presents a strategic problem. If the Air Force needs to strike multiple hardened targets simultaneously, such as nuclear command centers, missile silos, or underground weapons facilities, it must commit more aircraft, which exposes them to greater operational risk. To address this, the next-generation penetrator is being designed with a lighter and more compact profile, potentially weighing under 22,000 pounds. This reduction in weight opens up critical advantages, better payload flexibility, broader bomber integration, and potentially the ability to carry more penetrators per mission without sacrificing lethality. But weight isn't the only factor. Survivability in future high-threat environments is now a driving force in the NGP's design. Current MOPs are unpowered gravity weapons, meaning the delivery platform, the bomber, has to fly close to the target before releasing the bomb. Against an adversary like China, with its dense anti-access area denial networks and advanced long-range surface-to-air missile systems, this poses serious risks, even for stealth aircraft. This is why the Air Force is exploring the possibility of giving the NGP a powered standoff capability, essentially attaching a rocket-assisted propulsion system to increase range. If successful, a B-2 or B-21 could release the bomb dozens of miles away, outside the envelope of the most dangerous enemy air defenses. Now, there's also speculation that engineers are working on optimizing the aerodynamics of the NGP to enhance glide efficiency, allowing for longer time-of-flight penetration angles while maintaining speed and kinetic energy. Combined with advanced GPS-denied guidance systems, this would give the U.S. a bunker buster that can hit harder, faster, and more precisely while keeping American bombers safer than ever before. The Air Force's push for the NGP isn't happening in a vacuum. Earlier this year, during Operation Midnight Hammer, six B-2 bombers dropped 12 MOPs on Iran's fortified Fordow nuclear facility. The strikes used successive penetrations, 
bomb after bomb, digging deeper until the underground core was reached. But if the mission had been executed with the upcoming B-21s, double the number of aircraft would have been required, highlighting the limitations of the current weapon. Pentagon officials have made it clear, the lessons from Midnight Hammer are shaping the NGP's design. The Air Force wants smaller, more flexible, and more accurate penetrators without sacrificing destructive power. This isn't just about having a bigger bomb, it's about achieving maximum effect with fewer assets while staying ahead of evolving enemy defenses. The NGP isn't just a weapon, it's a message. As the Air Force prepares for potential conflicts in the Pacific or against other near-peer adversaries, the ability to destroy deeply buried command centers, nuclear silos, and hardened facilities could decide the opening phase of a war. And because the MOP and soon the NGP provides this capability without using nuclear weapons, it gives U.S. commanders more strategic flexibility without escalating to the nuclear threshold. But make no mistake, adversaries are watching closely. After Ferdo, countries like Iran, North Korea, and China are undoubtedly redesigning their bunkers and refining their defenses. This is not a static environment. Those were the words of Air Force Chief of Staff General Alvin, and they perfectly capture the future of modern warfare. The success of Operation Midnight Hammer proved that the U.S. still holds the capability to strike the most hardened, deeply buried targets on the planet. But in today's world, success has consequences. America's potential adversaries are watching, learning, and adapting. Every time the U.S. demonstrates its ability to breach underground command centers or nuclear facilities, new countermeasures are developed. Thicker bunkers, deeper facilities, stronger defenses. That's why the Air Force isn't just replacing the GBU-57 Massive Ordnance Penetrator, it's redefining what a next-generation bunker buster should be. While the NGP is being designed to push the limits of precision, survivability, and destructive power, the MOP isn't going away anytime soon. In fact, Alvin concerned that the Air Force is actively bolstering its stockpile of GBU-57s. Even after the NGP enters service, the MOP will remain an essential part of America's arsenal, ensuring layered capabilities for different operational scenarios. Still, much about the NGP remains unknown. Its final weight, its standoff range, its integration with the B-21 Raider, all of these details are still locked behind closed doors. But we do know this. With the contract awarded to Applied Research Associates and Boeing on board, the first full-scale prototypes are expected within the next two years. That timeline aligns perfectly with the rollout of the B-21 fleet, suggesting that the Air Force is preparing for a new era of precision strike dominance. The race to stay ahead is accelerating. As the Air Force pushes forward with the NGP, potential adversaries are already preparing their defenses. The battlefield of tomorrow won't just favor the strongest bomb, it will favor the most intelligent, accurate, and adaptable weapon. The MOP defined the last decade of deep strike capability. The next generation penetrator could define the next.